Hi, Dr. Sam here. Welcome back to my channel, helping you get closer to great skin days. Now, today's video is slightly different to usual um, and came about because I asked the Facebook group on the weekend the question, do you wear sunscreen every single day? Now, 865 of you responded, which is kind of amazing, I think. And the options were yes, no, and I don't know what the right amount is. Now, less than half of you answered yes, which meant that around 316 said no, and I think 163 said they didn't know what the right amount was. Not only that, over 160 comments were left on this particular poll, so I thought, I have stirred a can of worms, I should address this. So I thought I would do the frequently asked questions um, in the comments and just address what I think sunscreen every day is all about since so many of you had queries, concerns, or were just downright puzzled. So let's do your questions. So, so many questions to answer, but I thought I'd start off with the simplest first. Um, someone asks, didn't know I had to wear it daily, question mark. Now, what is the rationale for daily use of sunscreen? So I think the way to think about sunscreen is this. Um, we now know that there is no doubt that the rays of ultraviolet that cause sunburn also cause skin cancer and cause skin aging. So when we talk about aging, actually most of the time, what we're talking about is what we call photo damage. So it's a cumulative effect of exposure to ultraviolet rays that makes the skin's appearance change and displays those common things that we associate with aging, which are wrinkles, pigment, sagging, dullness, um, and a yellowish discoloration, sallowness. So these kind of changes that we say, oh, that skin looks older, actually we mean most of the time skin looks sun damaged. Now, in terms of anti-aging, and that is what I'm talking about here, a daily sunscreen habit makes sense. I, in my opinion, most women in their 20s and beyond, and probably most boys in their 20s and 30s and beyond too, are concerned with maintaining a healthy complexion. Now, in terms of anti-aging, that means blocking out ultraviolet rays. And I mean blocking out the rays that we're exposed to little and often. So in the main, we're talking about UVA damage. Now UVA rays come through glass um, and they're there in, we're exposed to them all year round. And it's that little and often exposure that accumulates over time to lead to the appearance of skin aging. Um, UVA also plays a role in skin cancer, but when we're talking about anti-aging, we're talking about maintaining the appearance of the skin. The good news is if we take precautions to prevent aging, we're probably also taking precautions to prevent skin cancer. But I think that sunscreen behavior for um, either living in a really hot country or it's you know, going to the beach or doing something outdoorsy is different behavior to the pattern I'm talking about. I'm talking about ensuring that I'm as best protected as I can be as I go about my normal working day. So that means for me, I live in the UK, um, in winter there's very little UVB, so I'm not worried about burning um, rays. So the SPF part of the sunscreen equation is less important than the UVA protection part of the equation, okay? So this is why if you think about it, your, your foundation with a little bit of SPF, which means you've got a little bit of protection against UVB, is not that useful in February where the days are short and there's very little UVB around, if any. What I'm worried about is little exposures on a daily basis over and over again to UVA rays. So that's where proper sunscreen that is formulated with proper UVA protection comes into play. That's why I rely on proper sunscreen as part of my anti-aging routine every single day. Next question. Um, I used to wear sunscreen every day, but now I don't because I'm worried about the risk of not getting enough vitamin D um, and it causing cardiovascular disease. And I now only use it as a little bit of make uh, makeup primer um, and I never reapply it. Um, is that a problem? So the vitamin D and daily sunscreen story in my head goes like this. 
In winter, in the UK, for instance, we get pretty much no UVB. So it is nigh on impossible to rely on the skin to make enough vitamin D for good health in winter in the UK. Therefore, without even, you know, obviously, you need to take a supplement to get enough vitamin D. It's an important vitamin and hormone and essential for good health. So if you want to make sure you're getting the right amounts, you take a supplement, okay? Um, so my feeling is that if we can rely on that for this portion of the year, why wouldn't we rely on it for the rest of the year? Um, we can certainly get adequate supplies of vitamin D um, absorbed through the gut. And the difficulty with sun and making vitamin D is it's impossible to give safe guidelines um, for the public because different skin types require exposure to different amounts of UVB to make enough vitamin D. And the problem is that once your skin has stopped making vitamin D because it quickly reaches a limit, um, continued exposure makes the skin start to change in ways that we know ultimately can lead to skin cancer. So I could never recommend sun exposure for vitamin D um, synthesis whenever I can safely recommend that you wear sunscreen and take a vitamin D supplement. So that's the way I approach the safety aspect when it comes to vitamin D and sunscreen. Concern number three, I still haven't found a comfortable one that doesn't affect my skin in some way. My current one is breaking me out, it's making me sore, it's making me greasy and my skin can't absorb as much as I should be applying. So I think this really touches on the main barrier to daily use, which is cosmetic elegance and the problems practically caused by wearing sunscreen. There are no, no doubt in any of our minds, and I'm sure you guys agree, that sunscreen, when poorly chosen, can definitely make trick breakouts, can definitely irritate the skin, and can definitely make a mess in terms of allowing makeup to go on over the top in a way that's office compatible. And, you know, I, I, I myself know that I wouldn't engage with a habit every day if it caused those kind of problems, the benefits would be far outweighed by the potential downsides and just in terms of, you know, getting out of the house in the morning looking pulled together. But I do think that that is where improvements in sunscreen formulations have come so far um, in terms of finding products nowadays that can function not only as sunscreens, but even have the advantage of having antioxidants built in. So you can almost see that they have um, the function of perhaps a sophisticated serum at the same time as protecting you from UV. So I think it really is all about trial and error in terms of finding the one. And certainly um, we talk a lot about this, the different brands I think are great. I think it is the one product it's worth investing a little bit more in to make sure you find one that really does fit beautifully with your routine and almost becomes a pleasure to use. So the next common question or concern was, I'm not sure that I'm applying the right amount. I guess that really taps into the original question. So um, the reason the amount is important is because sunscreen is tested in a very standardized way. And the number that you're promised on the pack, say it's SPF 50 with a UVA symbol with a circle around it, which tells you that it's good broad spectrum cover, is based on a laboratory measure of two milligrams per centimeter squared. Now, what does that mean in real life? This is where your quarter of a teaspoon or your 1.25 ml teaspoon um, comes into play because that's about the right amount for the face and about the right amount again for your neck. Now, I think what's really important is that people don't visualize what that actually means in terms of the particular sunscreen that they're using. Um, certainly in the clinic, I recommend uh, sunscreens that come in a cream and a liquid format, and it looks quite different in the hand when you compare a thick, um, gloopy cream to a thin, um, kind of filmy liquid. So I think it's so important that you get a visual for yourself so you know what you're actually applying. Um, and then I talked about my 13 dot technique, ways to make um, a certain amount of product be distributed evenly over the surface that you're trying to protect because a key thing when we're doing this is not to miss bits, all right? So I think when you standardize the quantity by making sure you're doing the right amount, um, then you can't really go wrong. And I personally think the best thing to do is do one 
proper application um, first thing in the morning, okay? And the next question is the big one. What do I do about reapplication? So, my philosophy is this. Given where I live and given the lifestyle I lead in terms of the way my day goes, my decision has been that once I've got my sunscreen on and then my makeup on, that's it. Unless my day is different to the average or we're in the peak of summer and I'm not in the office, I'm out and about doing errands. So again, like I said at the beginning of the video, that is different sunscreen behavior and requires a different approach. And I've done videos on this before using tinted SPF that I treat like foundation, etc. For me, I do a proper layer of SPF first thing when I'm doing my makeup after my skincare routine. And then I accept that that is the best I can do. So I give myself permission not to reapply because what I do then is just to manage my UV exposure. Um, so if it was a warm spring day, I would walk in the shade. Um, I may not even go out for lunch. You know, it just depends. It depends on what, what I feel like, what I'm, I'm gonna do, but I will minimize my skin's exposure time to, um, to strong direct UV. Um, for someone who has melasma, that might mean wearing a hat when they popped out to get a sandwich. You know, you have to kind of, Make it up as you go along what's best for you. But the bottom line is I don't take my makeup off and put it back on again in order to reapply sunscreen. For me, I've accepted that I'm still probably going to get some protection from that proper layer I put on first thing in the morning. I don't quite know how much. I haven't seen a study yet that really does tell me. And that probably varies a lot between sunscreen and sunscreen. But because I've accepted this behavior as being the best I'm going to achieve for myself, because most of this is about anti-aging and this is the maximum I'm prepared to put in, um, I do make sure I put that first um, and only layer on properly. So that's the compromise I've made. Um, if you live in a hot country, it is quite different. I do think it's much more of a challenge and that obviously leads to the development of products that make it easier to stay polished, um, but also to reapply sunscreen if necessary. Um, it's hard, I'm not saying otherwise, but that's what I've chosen for myself. Um, as I said, on days where I go to the gym or I'm out for lunch and I can't control my UV exposure, I have a different approach, which does mean I look less polished with more sunscreen on my skin, and that's okay. So there is a lot more to talk about. So actually I'm going to do another video covering some more of your questions and queries. Um, I feel certain this one's gonna generate lots of comments and I look forward to reading them. And if you like this content, please subscribe. Bye for now.